and Dr Hillary is taking a well-earned break this week. Pleased to say that uh, Dr Mark Por Porter has joined us uh, to answer many of your questions uh, that have been uh, occurring during this lockdown. Uh, Mark, if we can start with something that was brought up during the chat we had a little moment ago with our parents who were talking about the mums who were talking about whether their kids were going to go back to school. Susan, one of the mums, was very nervous about sending her son, Charlie, back to school, uh, particularly because she was talking about Kawasaki disease, which is sort of a, something that's come about off the back of the coronavirus, and she's concerned for Charlie, what the implication of that. Can you just explain a little bit about what it is and what the thoughts are that its connection with coronavirus might be? Well, so Kawasaki disease is a rare inflammatory condition that's been around well before COVID. Uh, it's rare. We get about one in, one in 25,000 uh, children under the age of 18, most of them under the age of five, get it every year in the UK. Uh, it can be mild, but it can be very serious and put you in intensive care and cause quite serious heart problems, for instance. We think it's triggered by viral infections. Um, and what's happened recently is there's been a slight increase in the number of... or quite a big increase, actually, from a very rare condition to still very rare, but quite a significant increase in some children who are getting COVID and they're becoming seriously ill, and some of them, I think when I last looked, the figures were under 20, have ended up in intensive care. Oh, unfortunately, we seem to have lost Dr Mark Porter, actually. Unfortunately, he was Let's halfway through can, explaining... Yeah, connect that up course. that line, because it's really, really important. Uh, we're coming back. We, we lost you for a, a second there, uh, Mark. You're back with us now. Uh, you were just explaining that some, I think, 20 children have ended up in intensive care. Yeah. So this is potentially a serious complication, but it is very, very rare. And just to re-stress that most children uh, who develop COVID-19 have a very mild condition, if any symptoms at all. So I don't think this should be putting parents off. It's a, we're still investigating the link. We don't fully understand it, but it's exceptionally rare, thankfully. And, Mark, a lot of people are getting in touch about their personal situations, their circumstances. I think, mm. you know, some people are finding it difficult because although there are these blanket rules... For each different circumstance, um, people, um, you know, obviously there's the situation with Dominic Cummings and he's got the rules that he says that he's stuck by, but there was a bit of flexibility around that and everybody has different circumstances and are trying to make it work, aren't they? Anthony's got in touch to say, my mum has cancer and is living at home with my dad. They're finding it hard to cope. My mum isn't very good at the moment. They're in their late 80s. My question is, can we go to their house to help them? She won't have carers in the home and we are all well. What would your advice be? for them? Well, the rules are clear. You're not supposed to go to somebody else's house, even to their garden. Uh, you're supposed to meet in a public place. But if you've got parents who are unwell, their safety comes first. And you need to be sensible and pragmatic in your approach. What I would say is that GP surgery, certainly ours, we have a dedicated member of staff who's ringing round vulnerable patients, such as those who are shielding the elderly, to check that they're getting food, that they're getting their medicines, that they're OK. Um, local councils are doing the same. And there's also, uh, once again, we've got this in our area, and I'm sure it's happening right across the country, there are amazing volunteer networks of people who are offering to, to drop in and check on people with social distancing, um, get them food and all of that sort of stuff. But, yes, if you're seriously concerned about your parents' welfare, then... If it was my parents, I would go and see them. Try and maintain social distancing. Try not to go into the house unless you have to. If you do have to go into the house to deliver some form of care, try and get your father... If you're looking after your mother, get your father into a separate room. Use all of the techniques, like hand-washing, all of those sorts of things to minimise the risk. But you, you mustn't stay away if you're very worried. But your first port of call, if you are concerned, you could ring your GP surgery and find out what's available locally to help them. And particularly if you live a long distance away, that might reassure you somewhat. OK, uh, Lee on Twitter uh, has uh, got in touch, Mark. He says, I'm currently shielding as a renal transplant recipient. Uh, I'm on immunotherapy. His 12 weeks is up at the end of June. Lee wants to know whether he should return to his full-time job in a school after his 12 weeks is up. He says he hasn't received any information beyond being notified as a critically vulnerable person. A good question, Lee. Uh, there are somewhere between one and a half and two million people shielding because they're at extremely high risk from COVID. And, I mean, they're basically on lockdown in their own homes. That runs to the end of next month. We don't know what's going to happen next. Um, there's no guidance on how this is going to be reduced. But what I would say is it's pretty clear that people are not going to go straight from lockdown 
to going back to working in a school. My guess is, and it's only a guess, that going forward, people who are currently shielding may have that shielding period extended, depending on how much virus is in the community, or may get some relaxation of it to the sort of lockdown that the rest of us were having when this first started. But I very much doubt that on the 30th of June, when shielding comes to an end, that things are going to change much for people who are currently shielding, sadly. OK, and Tracy on Twitter, you touched on this earlier when you talked about people meeting in, in open spaces, but she says, on the 7th of June, it's my sister's 50th birthday. Can I travel 50 miles to visit her and sit in her garden socially distanced? What would your advice be to Tracy? Well, it's tempting, Tracy, but no is the simple answer. I know it doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. You can meet your sister in a public place, so why can't you meet her in the garden? It's presumably medically just as safe. And I think the rationale behind this is that um, when you go to somebody's garden, A, it's easier to do that, and more of us might start doing that. And secondly, when you're there, it's very easy to slip into bad habits. May I use your loo while I'm here? Can I have a cup of coffee? Oh, go on, let's have a quick hug. So that's the rule. those are the rules at the moment. You cannot or should not go to your sister's garden, but you can meet her in a park near her house. So, well, yeah, so in I theory, then... it doesn't make so, a lot of so sense. What, so if, if they do want to spend the 50th birthday together, they could go and meet up and go for a walk? To a park. Yeah, absolutely. And at the moment, that's limited, supposedly, to one person from one household, so two people can meet. Now, if you go out to the parks, you'll see that's not necessarily what's happening, but... Them's the rules. Yeah, so we've got to wait for this idea about the social bubbles to come in, which, uh, which hopefully will be coming in soon, with this idea where you'd have ten people, but we've got to wait for that one. Well, yeah, we don't know. I mean, I think there's going to be more announcement this week. I mean, I think we're being drip-fed um, the good news. Uh, I'm certainly hoping for some good news, and it may be that things have changed by, by the date of the birthday. We'll just have to wait and see. OK, Dr Mark Porter, thanks very much for joining us and for going through those questions.